Today we're doing section 4.6 related rates. Example one, consider a sphere of radius 10 centimeters. Now suppose the radius is changing at an instant rate, instantaneous rate of change of 0.1 centimeters per second. Find the instantaneous rate of change of the volume. So this is in terms of time, we're finding the rate of change in terms of time. So they tell us when r equals 10, my radius, is changing at a rate of 0 0.1 centimeters per second. And they want us to find how my volume is changing at that instant. So what we first need to do is use our volume equation because we need to have volume equals for a sphere 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we need to find the derivative in terms of time, with respect to time. So dv over dt equals 4 pi r squared dr over dt, because it's all in terms of time. So then you plug your knowns in and hopefully solve for your unknown. My unknown is my the rate of change of the volume. I have my dr over dt as being 0.1 and r being 10. So I have dv over dt, the rate of change of the volume with respect to time, of 4 pi times 10 squared times 0 0.1. This would then be 10 squared, a tenth of that would be 10, 10 times 4 is 40, so 40 pi, and it would be centimeters cubed per second would be my answer. So with related rate problems, you want to read through Write down any formulas you need. Write down any knowns that they give you and what you have to find, your unknown. Let's look at example two. A hot air balloon is rising straight up from the, a level field is tracked by a rangefinder 500 feet from the liftoff point. At the moment the rangefinder's elevation is pi over four, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising at that moment? So let's go ahead and draw a picture. So with this, here's my ground. My hot air balloon is up to the sky. I'm using a rangefinder here. So I have an angle of pi over four. I'm 500 feet from where it went up. And how fast is the balloon rising? We, and we don't know how high the balloon is. So that would be my unknown five. So they give us when theta equals pi over 4, we know that theta is changing with respect to time by 0.14 radians. We know that if I call my horizontal x, x equals 500, they want to know what is dy dt, how high the balloon is um, going. So dy dt, how fast is rising up, is our question mark. So looking at this, if I'm here, I have opposite how it's rising over adjacent. So I actually have tangent theta equals y over x. My known that I have is 500. So tangent theta equals y over 500. Now I need to take the derivative with respect to time. The derivative of tangent is secant squared theta d theta over dt equals 1 over 500 dy over dt. dy over dt is what I'm solving for. So I would go ahead and plug in. So secant squared pi over 4 times 0 0.14 equals 1 over 500 dy dt. I'm going to multiply both sides by 500. So I get 500 secant squared pi over 4 times 0 0.14 equals dy over dt. And secant squared pi over 4 times 500 times 0 0.14 ends up being 140 equals dy over dt. So 
How fast is the balloon rising at that moment? It's rising 140 feet per minute at that moment. Let's look at example three. Coffee is draining from a conical filter, six inches in diameter and six inches tall, into a cylindrical coffee pot, six inches in diameter and six, six inches tall, at the rate of 10 inch, cubic inches per minute. A, how fast is the level of the pot rising when the coffee in the cone is five inches deep? How, and then B, how fast is the level of the cone fallen when the coffee in the cone is five inches deep? So let's go ahead and look at um, our picture and add some stuff to it. First, we know that this cone has a height of six inches. So that would be six and its radius is three. Also, we know the radius of the, of the cylinder is three and its height is six as well. So we have some of that going on there. So let's look at A. A, they want to know when dv over dt is 10, what is dh over dt, when, and we know that r equals 3. And they're talking about the level in the pot, not the cone. So the volume of the pot is pi r squared h. Well, I know r is 3, and that's not going to change, so the volume is 9 pi h. So then I go ahead and I find how my volume is changing with respect to time, so dv over dt equals 9 pi dh over dt. dv over dt, they told us, which is right here, is 10 equals 9 pi dh over dt. So dh over dt, when I solve for that, would be 10 over 9 pi inches per minute. And that's how you would go ahead and do A. So with B, They tell us dv over dt is negative 10 because it's going out of the cone, okay? So dv over dt is negative 10. Also, we need to come up with a formula for the radius because our volume of the cone is a little different. So the volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. And with the cone, our radius isn't constant as it's going down where it was in the previous example. So since it's not constant, we need to come up with a formula for how it's changing. So when I have my radius to height, it would be 3 over 6 equals r over h, or r equals h over 2. And they want us to find dh over dt when h equals 5. So my volume equation now is one third h over two squared times h, or volume equals one twelfth pi h cubed. Go ahead and find dv over dt, and that would be one fourth pi h squared dh over dt. DV over DT is negative 10 since the um, rate of change is leaving the cone, so it would be negative 1 fourth pi. H is 5, because they say when it's five, the cone is 5 inches deep, times DH over DT. 
And then when I solve for dh over dt, I get negative 40 over 25 pi equals dh over dt, and that would be inches per minute. So let's review the steps for related rate problems. Step one, draw a picture or sketch if you can. Step two, write down known information. Step three, write down what you're looking for. Label it with a question mark. Step four, write an equation to relate the variables. Step five, differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t, and then evaluate to find your answer.